What is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new Am I Still on the Air? Yes, we are still on the air. We are back 2022 style, man. Happy New Year. We're so happy to be here with you guys uh, for a very special episode. One of my favorite episodes that we do all year round. It's become a tradition here on Am I Still on the Air that at the beginning of a new year, we take some time to reflect on the previous year and then obviously look forward to the new year that is upon us. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our annual top 10 movies of 2021 and our top 10 most anticipated of 2022. So, man, I'm stoked. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. My name is Don Mega. I am your host. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. And as always, you know, I don't come alone when we do an episode like this, this gigantic, this exciting, the celebrations we have, we got to assemble the team, man. So we are back once again, friggins peeps in the house. What's up, y'all? The X Don Mega. Thanks mega, for having us. Mega, mega. Yes, thanks for having us. And to all the Red Dragons Radio's listeners out there, I say good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or just good time zone to you. And thanks for listening to us. Ooh. Oh, oh that, was, that was so sleek. That was kind of fancy there, friggin' Good, good nice. time zones to y'all. That's something yeah, new and fresh. You know, for your trying ears. to keep it, you know, you never know when they're listening. So, you know, just trying to keep hey, it neutral. Man. All over the world. We missed a worldwide up in this bitch. Um, just broadcasting <laughs> all over the world. So welcome, everybody, no matter where you come from. Uh, but guys, man, I don't know about y'all, but this truly is one of my favorite episodes to do. I look so forward to getting together and kind of hearing these countdowns, seeing what resonated with people, what didn't resonate with people, (laughs) um, the shocks and the agreements and just everything in between. Um, And to get the fuck out of here. Hell yeah, you know it's coming. I can't wait till Fred goes and then (laughs) get the fuck out of here. If I do, if I don't get one, get the fuck out of here per episode that we do this, I feel like I failed. So. I, feel, I feel like you like strive for that though. That's, I, I that's the thing. Do. I think I might have maybe one for sure, possibly two. We'll see. Yeah. Mm, well, okay. I can't. I can't wait because I know. I know Fred's gonna have the uh, the snubby kind of actors <laughs> list. With great choreography and cinematography, right, um, and uh, awesome lighting, and um, and then <laughs> Peeps is going to be very heavily child uh, ranked <laughs> with yes. a lot of kid movies, <laughs> and then I will have all the popcorn flicks. So uh, yeah. you know how it goes. This is how we roll. <laughs> uh, but I can't wait to see. Twenty twenty one was an interesting year. I mean, we had kind of half the year where movies still weren't coming out and things were delayed and a lot of things were going straight to home video. Um, And then theaters started to open and we started to get kind of back into a groove, but you know, a big mix of some streaming movies and theater movies. And, you know, when I started to put my top 10 together, uh, I was a little underwhelmed to be honest. I was looking at my list. And even though I have a lot of honorable mentions, it's not that, Like, they're movies I liked, but I didn't feel like there was a ton this year that I loved. And so even into my top 10, I was kind of like, wow, that movie made it (laughs) because it just wasn't anything else better. Yeah. Um, You know, so I'm not that they're bad movies, but just I don't know. Most years, you know, it's very hard to put together a top 10 list because there's so much. And that's where looking forward to this year, 2022, that was a very hard list to make because there's a ton of stuff coming out in 2022. So that one had me kind of shuffling and trying to figure it all out. But 2021, I just thought like, okay, we got some movies here and there are some standouts when you get kind of into that top five, but the overall top 10, I, I, I did feel a little underwhelmed. So I don't know what you guys have thought. No, you I'm, I'm right there with you. Like there okay, are even good. moments where I was super excited for a movie that, that wasn't even on my anticipated list. And then I watched it and I'm like, at just right off the bat, I'm like, that's not even going to make my top 10 this year. Like, dang. <laughs> and I was super excited about the movie. Like, I don't know. And I, I maybe it's just the trailers. Like, they knew pe- they just needed to get people to theater. So they might have made the trailers a little bit more appealing than what the actual movie was. I, I don't know. But yeah, I, I agree. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get that many 
bangers, super killers. Well, I actually am going to be on the opposite side of you guys because well, there's a lot I, of snubby films. There so was sure so many are. snubby <laughs> films, and actually, I'm disappointed that I didn't get to catch all the snubby. The Writers that I Guild to. Award goes to. Seriously, I think half the movies on my list would never even have made an anticipated list, and. I found them so shockingly refreshing, so shockingly good. So this, for me, ended up being uh, quite a surprising year where all the films I was expecting to be amazing ended up being duds. But all the films that I was, you know, either not expecting or didn't know anything about ended up really shocking me and surprising me. So I had the exact opposite reaction of you guys. <laughs> all right. All right. Thunder force I, is number one on the list. I Thunder know force. Baby. Thunder force. <laughs> um, do you guys agree with, uh, with 2022 though? Did you feel like, like, man, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good uh, list here coming out. Like did, did y'all struggle with 2022 or did you feel like it kind of slid in pretty easy? I'll let you go freaking. I struggle to kind of rank everything because there was kind of a lot. I, um, yeah. You know, when it comes to anticipation lists, it's like, you know, the things that make your list are the things you know the right. names of and the, right. the things you don't know names of. You need a trailer. <laughs> um, so uh, for me, there was plenty of names that I was excited for. And a couple trailers have dropped for a, a couple of them. So, um, yeah, I my struggle for this year's 22 for the 2022 was not trying to fill 10, but rather trying to, you know, which ones are going to make the cut yeah nice that's what was hard yeah it was definitely making the cut for sure like um, from i kind of rearranged quite a quite a bit <laughs> and, and i i definitely agree but like what i noticed from 2022 is like this is like another one of the year of sequels right and and <laughs> yes, most of these true. movies it, it's difficult because i'm like am i basing it off of the first movie do i need to like check to see like are we getting the same producers and directors <laughs> you know what i mean like am i going to get yeah. that same feeling that i had from the first movie or is just the name uh t'challa like enough to get me <laughs> so excited for a movie that i'm going to put it above everything else so right. I, I really wanted to get some and i do i actually have one um you know original film on my 2022 list that i'm actually thanks to a trailer pretty excited about but outside of that like it's hard like yeah, yeah am i yeah. going to pick a movie i haven't even heard of called like like i don't know like rubber peanuts over like black <laughs> adam or <laughs> doctor strange 2 like no right like, but once I see well, the, that's the fun thing. trailer, you know, yeah, that's the fun thing about anticipated is just we don't know. Right. Like we're just exactly. guessing, you know, and, and it's true because a lot of these movies we don't even have a trailer for. I mean, I got a couple, I think, on my honorable mentions that don't even have a poster, you know, so it's just <laughs> kind of like you're really just kind of going off a premise. You're going off a movie star. You know, and you're just thinking like this kind of sounds like something I'll be fucking I'm gonna dig. Yeah. So so that's what you're that's that's the hope. And then you see how it kind of pans out. I mean, that's what's always funny looking back on our list from previous years and being like, Well, that one didn't hit the way I thought it would, or <laughs> or whatever the case may be. So all right, guys. Well, without further ado, I want to start with honorable mentions. So, you know, with any year. There, you know, there's only 10 spaces to hit. And so, mm -hmm. you know, a year is chock full of a lot of movies. And I've seen a lot of movies in 2021. And there was a good handful that I wanted to at least shout out and give a little bit of love to. Didn't quite crack the top 10, but these were, you know, some four star movies that were on my list that I really, really enjoyed. So I want to kind of go around the horn and break down some honorable mentions. And before we actually jump right into our top 10 tonight so um i'm gonna get going here with this one um my Ooh. first one and th th this one right here was actually in my top 10 at one point and then kind of shuffled around and and fell down to the honorable mentions but it's the movie nobody uh, okay. that came out earlier this year um where basically it's a john wick <laughs> kind of spinoff almost mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh you know mild mannered dad and uh gets pushed past his limits and you find out he used to be this badass cia guy um and he kicks some ass and i really loved it it was a fun time at the movie theaters uh came out in the earlier part of the year but man it just uh Bob Odenkirk really just, I remember when they put this movie together and I read Bob Odenkirk in an action movie from the John Wick guys. And I'm like, 
that sounds stupid as hell like Bob Odenkirk and but man he blew me away he was so good in this and nobody was a really really fun film so that one cracks the honorable mentions uh the next one is a little other action movie that I had honestly thought looked like it was going to go straight to VOD but it came out in theaters checked it out the protege I actually really really dug the protege this year with uh um samuel jackson and um michael keaton and of course um oh man i'm spacing her name now <laughs> maggie q maggie, maggie q. q thank you how the hell uh, <laughs> but i love maggie q so n- no disrespect but uh yeah she's great and this movie surprised the hell out of me fun little action movie uh cracks it don't breathe too i love the original don't breathe and i was like man they're doing a sequel to this how are they going to pull it off they did, and they actually made it unique and not just repeat what the first movie did. It was a tense thriller, and I really, really enjoyed it. So Don't Breathe 2 makes the list. Uh, Jungle Cruise. Uh, I love The Rock. It's this fair. was a fun movie for the whole family to kind of go sit back, very reminiscent of The Mummy, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, just that fun family adventure kind of film. The Rock, Emily Blunt killed it. Uh, so Jungle Cruise makes the list. Fast Nine. I'm a big fan of the Fast and Furious franchise. Whoa, this was wow. another fun, fun one. And uh, cracks the uh, honorable mentions there. Ah, so. that's, that's a huge. shocker. That's <laughs> wow. You thought it would yeah. make the top 10? I thought it yeah. always it, does. It, it, it really doesn't it? <laughs> uh, no, true, true. It should have. It should have. But uh, with everything else, it fell out. <laughs> uh, the next up is A Quiet Place 2. This was another one that this was kind of when theaters started to really kind of open back up and it was fun to be back in theaters and and see the screams and to see people jump in their seats. And uh, th- I love the first Quiet Place and this one I thought was even better. So Quiet Place 2 um, was one of the solid standouts for me. Uh, next up is Wrath of Man. This is a Guy Ritchie action film uh, with Jason Statham. Man, I was surprised by this one. Great action um, just a really fun movie, man. Jason Statham kicks major ass in this. Uh, big standout for me, Wrath of Man. Uh, I know Peeps is going to appreciate this next one. It's the Mitchells versus the Machines. Uh, love this one, too. I'm not big on animated films, as you guys know. Uh, they actually usually never make my list <laughs> either. Um, but this is a hard one to deny. My daughter loves this one. She's watched it probably a dozen times. Uh, it's fun. It's from Lord and Miller, who do, have done so much good stuff. Uh, this one's just just a really fun animated flick that you can watch on Netflix. Um, Godzilla versus Kong, another just big budget knock 'em sock 'em. Just I love it. It was a it was a great great sequel. Um, boss level. This is another one that just really shocked me. It was a Hulu yes. exclusive film uh, with Mel Gibson and Frank Grillo. Uh, it's kind of a you know, day repeats kind of thing. He keeps getting killed and he's trying to figure out a way to not die. And um, it's directed by Joe Carnahan and it's just a badass action movie. If you haven't seen it, check out Boss Level on Hulu. One that really shocked me came out on Netflix was I Care A Lot. Uh, This movie, man, was just super trippy Mm -hmm. um, about this lady that just takes advantage of these old people and steals their money and steals their things and uh, and the revenge that comes her way. And it it was a shocker to me. And I had a great time watching this one. And lastly, shout out to my man, The Rock. Red Notice, man. Ooh, came right outside for me. Uh, The Rock, Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot. Um, awesome little action movie just came out in November, uh, Netflix original. And, um, this was a really fun ride for me as well with great stars that I love. So, uh, that's my honorable mentions, uh, wrapping through there that kind of, uh, accumulated, like I said, that four star kind of, uh, scale for me, uh, when I look back on the year. So, uh, Friggins, I'll pass it over to you, man. What you got honorable mentions wise. Well, before I kind of dig into the few that I put together, I wanted to make a couple comments on the ones that you put together because they kind of also and some of them made my list as well. So I thoroughly enjoyed Wrath of Man. I thought that was a good Guy Ritchie. Sometimes you get bad Guy Ritchie. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, So it's kind of you don't. It's it's a crapshoot. And adding the Jason Statham effect is always uh, a bonus for that. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun as well. You were preaching on boss 
level and I was doubting and I ended up watching it one day. I was like flipping through the channels and I, on Amazon or something, whatever it is. And I was like, oh, let me check that out. Dude, you were so right on that one. It was yes. so much fun. I was it was literally in my top 10 for a while. Yes, you <laughs> might have made it for a minute. Yep. I did, too. I did, too. But we we came strong at the end of the year here. But, um, you know, so I wanted to, to, to reference that. And then I can't go without mentioning a few that you had on there that I'm just like, what? Um, like Jungle Cruise. I was like, no, other than the rock dad jokes. I struggled that with that one. It was fun. It was almost fun. turned exactly. it off. And then no every- heart for no heart. He <laughs> no doesn't. Heart. Yeah. Everyone hyped up nobody. I was expecting to love this movie. I was like going into it thinking it was going to be on my top 10. And unfortunately, it was a little disappointing for me. What? So, you didn't uh, like nobody? I did oh, not. Oh, man. Like it. No, That's it little, crazy. Man. But um, uh, with that, oh. I did want to uh, reference a few of the ones that did make my honorable mentions. Um, and I'm going to also mention the protege. I forgot you had mentioned that as well. Yes. Uh, that was on the top 10 literally until like. I mean, just recently, uh, <laughs> yeah. there was, uh, uh, it was so much fun, a lot of cool action, uh, just a good time. Michael Keaton was great. Of course, Maggie yes. Q was always great. So uh, good stuff there. I also had No Time to Die was uh, on my uh, honorable mentions list because um, I I thought it was a great closure to the Daniel Craig series. And, you know, I know he's, he's getting up there, so they want to move on to Bigger, bigger and brighter things apparently so we'll see but i thought it was fun um while be it's a little bit long it still ended up being a, a fun good watch um another honorable mention i wanted to shout out which was one of those shocker ones was willie's wonderland a yeah crazy nick cage movie um this thing is bonkers and granted like when i rated it i had to give it a little bit of a low score because it you just can't there's just so many bad things about it but it's one <laughs> of those ones where the bad is so good and it was just really fun to watch so even though my score if you look through my letterbox and see oh you only give it like two and a half or whatever like it, it's still a top tier movie it was really really fun it, it's pretty self-aware though like it, it, it knows it's bad which is why yes, i think i'm exactly. a little bit more forgiving it's one I thing agree. if they're like like legitimately trying like oh we're really trying to make a good scary movie but like <laughs> it knows while i was watching i just kept thinking he's having so much fun <laughs> it looked like he was having fun but anyway moving on this one's probably going to piss you guys off i think and probably piss <laughs> off a lot of uh, <laughs> listeners but uh one movie that made my honorable mentions list that just today got knocked out of the top 10 was um dune uh man that I'm sh- movie i'm shocked it it was so good i had so much fun watching it it was one of those that you have to see in the theater if i mean just the experience of seeing it on the big screen was great uh but it just got nudged out just barely um and one last honorable mention that i'll mention uh i'll reference here before passing on to peeps is, that you'll mention i know honorable mention that i'll mention <laughs> is uh it's a documentary film called the alpinist um I am a rock climber. I enjoy rock climbing. It's fun for me. So I love these documentaries. But this one, uh, as it started, I was like, okay, I've seen this documentary a thousand times because it's almost the exact same as a couple others. But it takes some twists and and it's very, very good and uh, has some different emotional feelings that I hadn't had in, in these types of documentaries before. Very, very well done. You see some beautiful shots of some crazy ass dude hanging off the side of a mountain with no rope. And uh, it's ridiculous, uh, but so, so good. And, um, you know, pulls on the heartstrings. So that's uh, my honorable mentions list. Wheat. All right. Some good ones on there. I never even heard of the rock climbing documentary. So something new for everybody out there. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, peeps. Uh, let's reflect. On me and Friggins here, what you got? Do you got anything that matches? And then uh, take it away with anything you got. Um, un- unfortunately, like the past <laughs> two, three. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> am I still on the airs? I-, I think I probably saw maybe half the movies that you guys saw. So, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. But um, in terms of honorable mentions, I definitely agree with your uh, Red Notice pick. Um, it-, it was fun. 
it yeah. was fun as much as it sounded like i bashed that movie on my episode <laughs> it overall like it was super fun it was super funny i loved ryan reynolds little fourth wall breaking moment so it uh, that movie was was definitely dope and i also agree with your uh, jungle cruise um uh movies i guess that you didn't mention i'm not sure if you guys actually saw but um gosh what what is the full name of the movie but the barb and star the, oh uh, yes barb and star go to go Vista to del mar yeah like that oh wow it, it it's not funny like movie a funny top movie. 10 but it is funny yes i it agree it's pretty, very pretty funny. funny um also uh um uh the last night in soho um uh, it, it was one of those movies that i was still super, gotta see that super looking forward oh, to great. and i was thinking it was going to be on my top 10 but um, for reasons it, it did not quite make it but i i will definitely recognize the art that was that movie um Absolutely. really dope and also ghostbusters um okay you know, a lot of fun almost did, made mine almost made mine but um yeah yeah just I didn't had some issues get to see but it. was 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 still was still fun fun and i appreciate all the uh you know the the mm, the heartstrings nostalgia. they attempted, yeah, nostalgia that they, you know, were attempting to, to tug on. So, yeah, yeah. But outside of that, um, our Mortal Kombat, that's my last one. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. The most streamed movie day and date on HBO Max <laughs> in 2021, by the way. Oh, did not know. Yeah. Of all the movies that went day and date on HBO Max, Mortal Kombat was the biggest streamed one. That's probably Makes my sense. Fault. It was like the first one, too, to come out, wasn't it? No, um, it's like one of the it was one of the earlier ones because it came out in April, so there was a couple of movies before it. Um, but but I mean, but that's for the whole year, so even everything after the fact didn't. Ah, catch I got gotcha. you. You know, it's probably it's my fault more than Dune. I kept watching it over and over and over. <laughs> it's stream more than Dune because Dune's like twice the the the, yeah, the no, time it's like of five that million movie. hours. Oh, God, so long. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Wake up, <laughs> wake up. Spoiler wake up. alert, Dune is not on my list. <laughs> oh wow. It's not on mine either. Interesting. I thought it would be on yours. It didn't make mine either. So I, I guess did, we're... I didn't see it. Uh, mm. waiting for part two, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. He wants to great. Now I know they're leading into a part two. Jeez. <laughs> oh well, if you listen to Red Dragons, am I still on the right on the air? There you <laughs> go. Geez, you the air, well, no, they got greenlit right away. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Well, those are the honorable mentions. So we're going to jump into our top 10 now. And um, basically, we're each going to do our 10 through 6 to kick it off. And then we'll kind of circle back around and uh, see where the cards may fall. So um, we'll actually roll in a little bit of reverse this time. I'll start back with Peeps and uh, give us your 10 through six of your top 10 2021 well then let's do this now apologies again i have lots of movies on my list that i have not seen yet i mean don't breathe uh nobody in the heights uh the fear streets we're really looking forward to those boss mm-hmm. level uh, hitman's bodyguard judas and the black messiah uh pig um paper tigers uh, the Sparks Brothers documentary, uh, Tamar War, lots of movies I missed, but um, I'm pretty happy with my top 10. So let's jump into this bad mamma jamma. Um, number 10 is one of the movies that we had in Am I Still on the Air? Um, even when I did my own review about it, it might have sounded like I hated it. But all in all, like I, I do appreciate the what, what they ended up giving us for this movie. Um, and that is The Eternals. Um, I think if the Eternals was its own movie that wasn't connected to anything Marvel, if it was just a, a superhero-ish movie, I think it would have been great. But you, it, it just had issues because of the connections to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, it, it's, it, it falls short in a lot of different areas, and it creates more questions, I think, than actual answers that they're trying to give us. Um, but... At the same time, like I said, um, everything else about this movie in terms of acting and special effects and, and moments and scenes and tensions that build up throughout the movie, it, it is a good movie. And I definitely, um, I, I'm really looking forward to it popping up on Disney Plus here in like, what, a week? I think of the yeah, 12th, I think the is when it pops up. So for those of you that haven't seen it, I definitely recommend Disney Plus on the 12th of uh, January. And uh, yeah, and, and it's one of those movies, right? Like, marvel like 27 movies so far and if you want to enjoy it you have to watch all of these like you i don't even feel like you really have to watch 
any of the movies to enjoy no. Eternals. I agree. You no. can just jump in, yeah. watch it, and and if you want to continue from there and watch more of the movies, like, hey, hey, you got Eternals out of the way, so you're good. So, yeah, that would be my number 10. Um, I'm not sure. Do we want? Do I want to go around and check to see if it's on any of your guys? No, because I don't want to a... interrupt the flow of the All countdown. Right. Everybody can speak to their list. So continue, my friend. I dig it. Well, my number nine was one of your honorable mentions, and that was The Protégé. Um, right. I, I really enjoyed this nice. movie because though it had that same format of you know you're 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 a hardcore spy and then things start going wrong and you don't know who to trust it's the mission impossible basically story and though you feel like you can call and and you know what's going to happen um i think they do a really good job at adding some twists and turns that actually make sense to the story um that you know you don't really expect at the end, which I appreciate, and I love the um, the ending of this movie. And 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 again, the movie's been out for a while, but for those of you that haven't seen it, I, I don't want to spoil it. But the ending of the movie is just like whoa, and then something happens. You're like whoa, yeah, <laughs> it's really good. It was really fun, and uh, I haven't seen Maggie Q in a while. Um, and to you know when she you know th- to see her back in action literally yeah, yeah. it was it was great and samuel L. jackson and everything he does <laughs> and um yeah th- this movie overall it was a lot of fun a lot of great action a lot of great humor and the dynamic between her and michael keaton was just so good like their chemistry was and it, maybe it's just i don't know th- they're both really good actors and the two of them just did an amazing job together like ah very fun very great i highly recommend the protege yeah, she's been doing a lot of horror movies as of late over the last couple of years. So it was good to see her get back to some action because she's so badass. Super I agree. Badass. Totally. Yeah. And, and like, it's crazy, right? Like whenever we see like a great action star, like the first thing we say is like, all right, how are we going to get them in the MCU and who are they going to yeah. play? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking that, all right, yeah. I, I could see an Electra in her. Oh, know. that'd be great. That would be cool. Yeah. Take so um, my numbers um, eight is a, a controversial movie that I'm pretty <laughs> sure I might get Uh-oh. the first GTF uh, out of here, but um, that is Malignant. It's my number oh. eight. Oh, no, okay. okay. No, I, I like it. Malignant. Okay. I, I like Malignant. Man, people like, yeah, have some people hate this it. movie. <laughs> and I don't, and I get it, but I don't get it. Like, yes, the, the, the twist in the movie kind of literally flips the movie upside down and it turns into a whole new movie after that. I get it. That's fine. You're expecting movie X and then the end of the movie, you get movie Y and then you're just like, why? So that's fine. But at the same time, like this is an original movie, an original concept that I I wouldn't have even considered. And the twist and even what happens was I'm just cracking up and laughing. I know maybe that was the reaction I was supposed to have. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know in a horror movie. You're to be <laughs> That's what I'm laughing. saying. But I am but like having great. such a good time watching this. And I'm like, I love this. I, yeah. I love what's happening right now. So um, I like that it had like Sam Raimi, like Evil Dead kind of vibes. Like yeah. it, was, it, it just had that old school 80s kind of horror, which I loved. Right. Then, and it wasn't too much like special effects like yeah, there was it's all pretty practical. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They did a good job with that. And the worst thing about that entire movie though, is when she parks so close to the edge, I was like, who parks close to the edge like that? <laughs> Nobody. I understand. Friggin like <laughs> that was definitely a standout moment. Like who and why would anyone ever do this? Exactly. Like, I was like, th- what? like this moment, like you're, you're just foreshadowing your death right now. Is what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, that was, that was a good moment, but yeah, man, like, just a weird wacky duty um james wan you know film and uh yeah you guys ah, anyone that hasn't seen it i i recommend malignant please check it out it is it is a ride i will say that uh so that's my number eight number seven i'm getting to is a movie that i've been looking forward to uh, for a long time it was on my most anticipated uh for the year prior um, is my number three uh, most anticipated, but that is God versus Kong, Godzilla versus King Kong. Um, this th- this was a, a nostalgia thing moment for me. The moment when the two of them 
at the end of the movie actually are fighting Kong and, and, and Godzilla are actually fighting each other. And then, you know, then the other big bad Kaiju pops up and the three of them are fighting. Like, I'm not even, I'm not kidding. I had tears of joy, not, they weren't running down my face, but like, I was so freaking happy. Like the kid just jumped out and took over my body for a moment. That's like awesome. I, I have loved these two characters incredibly as as a child. I have pictures of birthday cakes with peeps and and these two or one of these two characters on his birthday cake, and I to see them come together in the way that they did with the effects that they did and the ah oh, it was it was great. Oh, I will say it's not a good movie, but you're there to see two things. Are you there to see one thing, right? Kong versus Godzilla and you get that multiple times and I enjoyed it so much um I I had a very fun time with this one so yes Kong versus God is my number seven uh, number six is another movie that you guys may question it didn't even make your guys honorable mention so <laughs> I know it's not <laughs> in your top 10 uh my number six is Cruella oh, oh nice that was good though eh. <laughs> I, I liked it I I, I it was fine was I wasn't fun. expecting to like it. Um, I, I thought it was just going to be like, meh, whatever. Uh, great. Disney's just doing, creating another character. It's another Maleficent type of thing, which I did not like. Um, but I ended up really enjoying it to the point to where they kind of teased us for a sequel a little bit at the end. And I'm like, I come, come on back, Emma Stone. Let me, <laughs> let's, let me see you do this again. I really like Emma Stone. Um, I like that they turned the, 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 the classic villain into more of a uh, just an opportunist and you know she wasn't evil and she didn't even hate dogs like she did in the original cartoon she just uh, it was a, quite the opposite like she actually had dogs and <laughs> I don't know it, it, they changed the character I, I it, it was a it turned into a heist movie which I thought friggins would like um, oh yeah I thought that was cool and I wasn't expecting a Cruella de Vil movie to become a heist film with twists and turns of this is actually the one who killed your father. This is actually your mother. Whatever. It was great. Um, I wasn't, wasn't expecting it. And um, I've, I've, it would, didn't even make my, it wasn't even on my radar. And I think for that, I enjoyed it just, just so much more. So yes, uh, Cruella, um, very fun, very funny. Uh, lots of twists, lots of turns, great effects when there was effects. And uh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to, to, to another if they do it. They are doing it. So there nice. you go. So that's my 10 through 6, guys. All right. Well done. Interesting, interesting. Not too bad. No, no get the fuck out of here Thank yet. You. But Fred <laughs> is up guys. next. We're so right. let's get ready to rumble. Well, <laughs> so, friggins. <laughs> What you got? What you, what you got right. for us, Friggins? All right, I'm I'm, I'm rubbing my hands. He's together. rubbing the he hands. This oh early. boy! Here we go. All right. Okay. So my I, number. He didn't even. He, he's been looking forward to Snake Eyes for so long, and it didn't make his. Uh, it didn't. It, it was didn't on make my, his oh. anticipate or his. Uh, I know. Remember how much he loved just that picture of him walking up the steps? Yeah, oh, man. Like, oh, it was Snake Eyes, like <laughs> best movie of the year, of- just from that picture. <laughs> Guys, that movie was still fun. It was not a GI Joe movie. I just pretend it was a its own story i had a good time with it but um at the, the end of the five day seconds of the end of the movie when he put the suit on <laughs> a, the suit, yep. <laughs> at the end of the day it was uh just okay and it didn't make my list so Aww. sorry but an unexpected addition to my list was number 10 in the heights i love musicals they're super fun for me and i seem to be in this like a musical renaissance for myself where uh, i'm liking them more and more and more and looking forward to them more i'm like seeking out more of them um and this one just had so much energy and this just it was so much fun i had a blast with it cool songs cool cast cool dancing um i thought the choreography was fantastic it's just all around fun time. So good movie. That's my number ten. I, I'm curious. Ha, did you see the uh, Cyrano? Oh, dude, I, is I cannot wait for that one. Yes, I just saw the trailer for it, um, and I am very much looking forward to that. Okay, one. me too. Yes, yes, cannot wait. 
Um, so number nine, this is where I'm not sure if it's going to be a GTFO or not. Uh, <laughs> already. Oh, boy. Yep. Um, and this film. One I of actually, many. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I think I'm all right. I, I left the rom-coms off. Like I watched The Hating Game tonight and I really enjoyed it, but it didn't make the top 10. Um, <laughs> but I watched this today, actually, uh, before or earlier in the day before we filmed this episode and not expecting much. And I freaking loved it it's called come on come on it's got Joaquin phoenix um i don't know the little boy's name in it but it just was incredibly captivating for me it's filmed in black and white it's filmed by a studio oh, called a twenty. i knew you were gonna be out. <laughs> a24 too i'm out a, i'm gonna everything i'm about to say don is out it's it's black and white it's a24 yeah. it's extremely slow it's a bunch of talking not a whole lot happens but oh my goodness it is just it i couldn't I couldn't stop watching. Like it was so interesting to see this relationship between uh, Joaquin Phoenix, who's playing this boy's uncle. And he, you know, he's taking care of this kid where he doesn't really have much to do with kids. He doesn't have his own kids. He doesn't know how to deal with them. And this, it's just, oh, it's so good. It, it doesn't even sound like a friggin's movie. I'm shocked. I, I did not expect to, to like it as much as I did. I thought I was going to like it, but Definitely not top 10 worthy, especially to kick out stuff like Dune and The Protégé and James Bond, you know, those kind of classic type of, you know, friggin' things. Um, <laughs> but I have a huge appreciation for a personal story, something that is like down to earth, grounded, not, you know, into the world kind of thing. Um, you know, I look back to Peanut Butter Falcon being like, you know, my number two movie of the year at the time. Um, and you know, it's stuff like that, where it's just this like little personal story. And it's really about the people. And um, they also add this weird element that I don't know if it was um, like scripted dialogue, or if it was like actually doing these interviews with the real kids, it was hard to tell. Uh, but the stuff that they were saying was just, oh, I couldn't, like, especially at the end, they it wouldn't they're rolling the credits, they just continue to have these, these uh, recordings that they did with these kids. And I feel like it's real recordings and not, not scripted dialogue, but it, it, I loved it. It was absolutely fantastic <laughs> and unexpected. So my number eight is pig. And I am so sad that you didn't uh, get to see this one yet. Peeps. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Well, the funny thing is, like, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, okay, another crazy Nick Cage movie. And everyone was like, this is John Wick, but with a pig instead of a dog. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, it's going to be over the top action, totally ridiculous. And um, one of our... Uh, I'll actually, I so wish it was John Wick with a pig instead <laughs> of a dog. That would have been such a better movie. So the funny thing is, though, like, you know, our buddy, we have a, a, a Red Dragons radio buddy on Twitter. His name's Mike, it was, who's a Nick cage super fan and um you know i was getting a little deluded with everything he that nick cage comes out with he's like it's amazing yeah like, best movie okay, ever five stars this movie's gonna suck but like i kept seeing not only him talking about it but like all kinds of people were rating it so high except for don don's like that all the film sucked. snobs <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much all the film snobs but i watched it and it blew me away oh my gosh it's such a cool story and i was rolling my eyes at this concept of john wick with a pig and i got something completely unexpected and it couldn't have been better for me i think this movie is 10 times better because it wasn't john wick with a pig <laughs> and, that's all i wanted no. <laughs> um but no i mean i'm talking like stellar performance from nick cage i don't think i've seen him perform as good um and i highly recommend watching it, it is a slow burn there's minimal dialogue there's not a whole lot Very that actually <laughs> true true and there's not a whole lot that actually happens but no oh my gosh See, what is... <laughs> you say things that just makes me question right what 
But right? what's there it's is so much fun. So good. No, <laughs> Nothing no. happens. It's fun, so much fun. <laughs> fun isn't the word. If I said, I don't think I said fun. If I said fun, then I was wrong. It's not a fun movie, but it is a good movie. It is a great movie. And I absolutely loved it. Um, number seven. I don't know if this is going to, I think we talked earlier, Don. I don't think you're going to have this on your list. I'm counting it. And that's just, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I have included this on my list because it did come out in 2021 and because it was so drastically different than the original Justice League. So I went ahead and included it um, thinking that, you know, it deserved to be on this list because to me, it feel it, it was, I hated the first version of Justice League. Like I literally dislike that movie. I will never watch it again. And this one, I thoroughly enjoyed and I've just felt it was so much better on so many different levels. Um, and again, even though it is kind of a movie from a couple years ago, because of the, it had enough of a difference of it. I thought that I should include it on this list. Right. And that brings me to number six, which is uh, Will Smith's uh, King Richard. Uh, this one did the movies as well as HBO Max release. I thought this was fantastic. I remember seeing the trailer thinking just by watching the trailer, I was like, that movie's going to make me cry my eyes out. <laughs> and it didn't disappoint. Um, you know, again, the acting that Will Smith does is just. Is that the with the Serena? Uh, and Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. I, I haven't seen that one either. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. And it's nice to see. You know, when we see like the heroes of our time, you know, and these these rock star, superstar um, athletes, they make it look so easy. And you just look at them and say, you know, oh, it'd be so nice to be them and to have that skill. But to really break down and kind of see some of the things that they go through and the struggles and the fight that they have to do every single day to become that and everything that they've given up and sacrificed to become that is just amazing and again will smith is a stellar actor and it's a shame he doesn't have more accolades for his work but nonetheless that made my number six all right um yeah i did not get to see king richard i'm super bummed about it i somehow just never got the time when it came out to either see it i was gonna watch it on hbo max because i knew i didn't really want to go see that one in the theater um but then never even got around to seeing that and then those uh, day and date movies only are on hbo max for 30 days and then they get removed and then you got to wait a couple months from the try to circle back so i did not get a chance to see it but i've heard nothing but great things so i'm not shocked to hear it on your list um i'll give you this friggins you definitely uh take the time to see the movies that i could not give a fuck less about <laughs> um <laughs> you know uh and that's the thing like the, there's just certain movies that come out and i see the trailer and i'll be like i will never watch that as long as i live you are like i'm gonna give it a shot like you pretty much yeah. give everything a shot like when you posted the other day that you watched spencer i was like why the fuck would you waste the time to watch that <laughs> like it's like there's just certain movies like come on come on i'm like i saw black and white i shut it off like you know like i, I there's certain things i just can't get down with and i definitely give you props for at least giving pretty much everything a chance and just seeing the way it kind of rolls out so kudos I, to you i, uh, I will read uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I have to say, in all the years that I've known you, that might be the nicest thing you have <laughs> ever told me. And my heart is so warm and fuzzy right now. Thank you, there sir. There you go. I was also <laughs> going to say I will refrain from the get the fucks out of here tonight because, you know, the thing about these lists, <laughs> and we do it out of fun, but the thing about these lists, too, is that, you know, movies are so subjective and they resonate with people in so many different ways that, you know, when somebody is counting down their list, it's like, you know, it, it, is, it is hard to, you know, kind of criticize somebody for liking something or hating something um, because it just hits on such a different level. So, you know, um, when we're talking about, you know, the movies you enjoyed the most of the year, you know, we might chuckle here and there, but we try, try to try to not disregard your thoughts <laughs> for um, for what comes down the pipe. So uh, as, as well. So um you know nothing but love but uh yeah and, i mean that's just the thing with you know with with movies is just so subjective and king richard like is that like foreshadowing that we're going to see the punisher and deadshot like together in the future or something <laughs> hopefully it's yeah, all connected hopefully. it's all connected <laughs> it is 
All right. So my turn uh, for 10 through six. Um, and, you know, I kind of went back and I was looking at my uh, 2021 list and, and I'm actually pretty spot on with a lot of the movies that I looked forward to last year uh, that I anticipated. Most of the movies, I would say about seven of the 10 um, made it actually in my top 10. The funny thing, though, is my number one most anticipated movie last year was F9. And yeah. you saw it, it made my honorable mentions. Yeah, that was and my shot. number two most anticipated movie was The Matrix Resurrections. And that did not make my top 10 either or my <laughs> oh, honorable mentions. Man. So, so kind of crazy that my top two actually were the ones that did not make it. Uh, and another movie that was in my top 10 was Mission Impossible 7, which got delayed and didn't even come out this year. Um, so That's right. So we, we dealt with that a lot last year when we did our and, list. Uh, it was just your number four as well last year too, right? Friggins, uh, uh, Top Gun. Yeah, the new uh, yeah. Maverick. Yep, exactly. So he shifted it, I'm sure, to, <laughs> to his new list. And uh, Uncharted. Uncharted was on. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Twenty one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a lot of that last year, and some of it still carries over to this day. So, um, so before I get to the top ten, uh, I want to kind of address something uh, Fred brought up in his top ten. One of his movies was the Zack Snyder Justice League. So I struggled with this one. Um, Me too. I really, really did because I know some people are counting it because like Fred said, it did come out this year. It is basically a, a drastically movie. different movie. It's yeah. four hours long. It's a pretty much no remnant left of the original film. Um, so I get it. And I would never discount anybody saying, you know, like, oh, it's on my list. Um, what I wanted to do is I actually did not include it in my list because I didn't really, I couldn't find the heart to truly count it as a 2021 film just because it was filmed in 2017. And, um, and yeah, I just couldn't count it, but I will say this, that if I was to count it, it'd be my number one movie of 2021. Oh, nice. So, so right there, I just wanted to put that out there. It was already marked down. That yes, if I had counted it, it would have been my number one movie. I love the Zack Snyder Justice League. It was incredible. It's four amazing hours that fly by like nothing. Um, I actually turned it on the other day just to show somebody at work. They hadn't seen it yet. And we were talking about Jared Leto as Joker. And I actually put the movie on on my phone and just went right to that end credit scene where hit Batman and Joker are talking and just showed him that scene. And, like, and it still is just such a great scene of the, you know, um, and she said, when I kill you and make no mistake, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> and just, it's pretty I, dope. I love that scene between the two of them. And, and it was really cool and got him stoked to go home and watch it. So yes, I love that film. So if I was to count it, boom, spoiler alert would have been number one on the list, but I did not count it. So here is my official top 10. And you, you might be a little bit shocked. I know I was a little bit shocked at my number 10 because hmm. I did not think it was going to make it, but Overall, once again, when I look at this list and I look at usually my top 10 movies are the movies I had the most fun with that I really enjoyed watching and, you know, maybe something I've seen multiple times this year. Uh, so it actually came in at number 10 and that's Black Widow. Um, nice. I, I really like the movie. It's an MCU film. You know how much we all love the MCU. And it was just cool to see Scarlett Johansson kind of come back after a character was killed. And and I think really just because of the ensemble, like David Harbour and Yelena coming in, Florence Pugh, and just a lot of it kind of worked really well as this ensemble. And it had a lot of good heart. And it was just a good little kind of thriller of a movie. So for me, that comes in at number 10. To me, no. that movie that's all that's the same thing with the Zack Snyder. Like that should have came out in like 2017. So like <laughs> mentally, I don't consider no. no, I'm just kidding. But you're right, you're right, you're right. Really um, fun movie. Yes. My number nine is the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. I wow. love this it. movie. It was so much fun. I saw this in the theater. I laughed my ass off. Ryan Reynolds coming back, Samuel Jackson and Salma Hayek having a bigger role in this. And she's so fantastic in this movie. I loved it so much more than the first film. Um, I just thought like the humor was on point. I love the action in it. It was so funny. Um, and I just had a really good time with it. I remember leaving the theater with a massive smile on my face, just being like, man, I was entertained for two hours. That was great. So it really stuck with me. And the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard comes in number nine. 
I think that's my version of pig for you. Like I (laughs) hated it. I thought it was so whack and boring. Oh my gosh. It was so predictable. Oh, I like I could just watch a black and white movie with no dialogue. (laughs) (laughs) Pig where not much happens. Yeah. (laughs) I'm telling you, I could, I was just like so bored anyway. Hey man, hey, then once again, subjective. Uh, number eight for me is another movie I had a blast with. Um, it's actually a Netflix original film, but I was able to see it in the theater on a big screen and no hell yeah, say. kicked ass. Army oh, of the Dead. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. That was way better than I thought it was going to be. Dude, so good. I loved Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder, baby. Love Zack's style. And I'm so glad I got to see this on the big screen because I don't know if it would have had the same effect for me just watching it at home. Uh, but but seeing it on that big screen, seeing the zombies and Batista and all the action and just gore and just everything, you know, Zach knows how to make a zombie movie. I love Dawn of the Dead. And I just I was so happy to see him kind of back in this world. Mm-hmm. And I I loved it. I thought the ensemble was great. I thought all the characters were great. And it was a fun, fun time for me at the theater. So Army of the Dead comes in at number eight. Yeah, number no. seven. Is a movie Peeps had kind of mentioned earlier. He didn't get to see it, but it was on his list of things he wanted to see. And I had so much fun with this. And it's another one we watched at home because it was an Amazon original. And that's The Tomorrow War. Chris oh, yeah. Pratt, um, futuristic sci-fi movie. Um, people come from the future. Hey, man, we got this alien war going on. You need to come with us. And they recruit people from 2021 to go to like 2052 and go fight these aliens to save the world. And man, this was another one that was just super fun. I love sci-fi. I love when they tie it in with great action, when they have good humor with it. And of course, with Chris Pratt leading this, it had all of that. Uh, The ensemble was really good as well. I love the action in it. The aliens were super cool. I love the Tomorrow War. So that comes in at number seven. And then my number six is one that I was surprised that it made peeps list. And it definitely slid in on mine too when I actually looked at everything overall, and that's Eternals. So okay. uh, Eternal slides in at number six, another MCU entry. And it's funny because on my anticipated list, I actually had Eternals at the very end of the list, and I had Black Widow at like number six. Oh, so when and I... so it kind of reversed itself. Hey, my Eternals um, is number six, just so you know. So. Uh, of my uh, uh, anticipated, anticipated. Yeah. Nice. I didn't have yeah. Eternals on either. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had Eternals low on the list last year because I didn't know what the fuck it was. <laughs> so all we knew was it was a Marvel movie. Yeah. Um, so, True. so you know, so I just knew it'd probably be something pretty cool. And you know, at the end of the day, like I said, when I first kind of put started putting the list together, I actually didn't even have Eternals on it. And then as I was scrolling through all my movies of the year, I was like. Oh, I forgot Eternals. And then I started to think about it and I saw it twice in the theater and I liked it even more the second time. I'm looking forward to seeing it again when it hits Disney Plus here in another week. And um, I did have a really good time with this movie. It's different. It flows. It's sci-fi. It just, I did like the ensemble cast. I mean, it really just clicked for me. So, um, you know, we, we all know if you listen to our spoiler reviews, I mean, it's still on the kind of lower portion for me on my overall MCU list. But when you look back on the year, I did have a good time with it. So Eternals comes in at number six. So Black Widow at 10, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard at nine, Army of the Dead at eight, Tomorrow War at seven, and Eternals at six. Nice. nice. All right. So now it's top five time, baby. This is where we get into the nitty gritty. So spinning it back around. Peace. <clears throat> what you got? Are we, uh, so we're going to uh, all five through one, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, go for it. All right, knuckle crack sound. Crack, crack, crack. <laughs> All right. crack. Um, so uh this got a got a little bit difficult this year. Um though we as we said that you know a lot of movies came out. Um I missed a lot of them, but the, the ones I did see and the ones that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed. Um so this is rough, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. So um number five is <clears throat> was my number two most anticipated last year uh f- for this year and uh that was free guy um ryan reynolds uh an ai on a video game um and this movie ended up becoming like a romantic comedy 
which <laughs> I wasn't expecting, but which is fine. Like, you know, <clears throat> it's fine. But like the again, Ryan Reynolds, right? Like he he's one of those for me that you kind of can't go wrong. Um, I, I I love his just his personality and that always comes out in all of his movies and this one it, it was great and there was a, a little cameo that I wasn't expecting from um gosh what's <laughs> what's step up name what's his name Jamie Mike Jamie yes Tatum. T- Channing Tatum <laughs> he had a nice little cameo in this movie yes, it, was he just, did. it was great <laughs> it was, he was really awesome. good um all and, and you know all the you know Fox took over Disney so I'm sure the whole last scene with all the special <laughs> effects was added what stuff the shit? that they threw in there <laughs> but then either i can't remember his name but from the the big bad boss the the other guy i, I don't remember what his name was but you know big like buff right? no like oh oh yeah yeah <laughs> it was it was catchphrase catchphrase <laughs> it was a it, the movie was really fun and um i i it was you know Interesting concept, I think, with AI becoming self-aware and literally thinking for itself. Just really fun. And again, the the, the addition of the um, whole love story was fine. Like, it, not really forced, but it was fine. I was very, very okay with it. But overall, I really had a good time with Free Guy. And I definitely recommend to anybody who hasn't seen it. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure it might be on at least one of your guys' lists. So I'll, we, I'm sure we'll be hearing it again. <laughs> Um, number four, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure most of these, except for Fred, I know Fred's going to have like Falcon Winter, like you know, as his number one. But... <laughs> <laughs> My number four, no, no shade though, yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, none, none whatsoever. But the Falcon Winter. Winter, um, so number four, Su- Suicide Squad. Um, my lord, I, this movie, I, I really wish I would have saw this movie, like you know, with all my boys, yeah. but. Like it was so good. And I was expecting it to be good because of the change in direction, change in cast, and just the overall feeling from the trailer. I I knew that it was going to be great, but the level of greatness that I got from this movie, I was far beyond my expectations. Um, Very fun, very great transitions. It was a comic book movie. (laughs) They were definitely villains or, you know, they were not heroes. And um, it was it was good. It was really good. I really am saddened by the performance that it did, uh, especially comparing it to something like Venom and or um, Let There Be Carnage, where I, I feel Suicide Squad deserves that level of box office treatment. But again, this was earlier in the in the pandemic um the post pen whatever earlier in the year so you know maybe that and it was an hbo max do. movie so right. that hurt it directly yeah. to hbo max too yep. so but yeah oh suicide squad i cannot go i i could i could go on and on about this but very fun <laughs> but we got to suicide on. squad yes <laughs> number three shang chi uh, uh great movie uh we did it am i still on the air actually we did one about suicide squad as well yeah but shang chi i all of us were like, or you know, you and I were, were super excited about it. Um, Friggins, you know, ended up uh, telling us a little bit later just how much he loved that movie as well. Um, I just, I'm pretty sure, just all in all, like all of us can, you know, say nothing but good things about this movie and what this movie brought. And that's another big thing about these MCU Marvel movies is yes, if the movie's good, great. But if the movie brings more into the overall universe of Marvel, it just it just makes it that much better because you just you just set the bar up a couple of levels for the future of the MCU. And this movie did just that. Um, very fun martial arts, amazing music. I love Simu Simu Liu. Yeah, yeah, great. Follow him on Twitter as well. He's freaking hilarious. He's awesome. <laughs> so and watch yeah. Kim's Convenience on Netflix. Yes. So good. Oh, it's good. It's good. So good. Yeah. So Shang Chi. Uh, number two. Okay. See you. <laughs> number two is Spider Man Far From Home. 
what? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, not I expected that. I was expecting this one to be my my number one. Uh, this was my number one most anticipated movie. I know um, what his number one is now. Though. This, movie, <laughs> um, this movie did things to me emotionally. <laughs> and for clarity, you're not referencing Mysterio's Far From Home, but you meant No Way Home, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> no, no, yes, I am talking about the 2018 movie Far From Home. <laughs> I thought right. Well, it wasn't number one, so I wanted to make sure. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we just did a whole Am I Still on the Air about this one, too. Mm-hmm. Um this movie man it is phenomenal beyond all all words but i will say i think why i put this at number two because my number one it didn't require you to watch you know five other movies along actually nine other movies total to get the full effect that the movie is trying to deliver and you cannot watch this movie by itself and get the full effect. You can appreciate all the great effects and, and acting and, oh, they're crying. I guess I should cry too, but you know what I mean? But yeah, but, but for what, but outside of that. I think that should bring it down in its ranking because, <laughs> because of I, I, I know. Right? I do. I, I do because I, uh, I just, that's you know, fair. yeah, that's I, fair. I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, but yeah. And, and also, you know, in terms of movies, me and my, and my you know family watch, uh, my number one, you know, that that's kind of why it takes the cake. So I'll get that in a, get to that in a little bit. But yeah, Spider-Man, no way far from home coming was uh, that's my number two. <laughs> nice. um, number one is. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just I, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, too. Yeah. yeah. So. Is there a Wii View coming up? <laughs> it's a Wii View that is out today. If you want to check out the People's Forum at uh, the People's Forum, just Google the People's Forum. You'll find it. Two E's on People's. Uh, but that is the Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, this movie, I, I get it. And I understand those of you that don't like animated. And I understand those of you that don't like family films. I get it. I get it. You don't have to like this movie. But hey, I don't me, like animated. It was in my honorable mention. So give me some credit. That's <laughs> true. You get the credits. You get the credits. I'm not it's talking great to movie. you, Don. I'm talking to Mr. <laughs> Peanut Butter Falcon. No. Hey, hey, why you keep bringing that up? You got um, Mitchell's First Machines as your number one. Oh, best movie. Uh-huh. Like this Better movie, Spider-Man? man. Like it goes. And it like there, it, there's Easter eggs like out the chain in this movie. There's actually like a little mini game. Like if you want to take the time and learn the 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 robot code, like there are there is code in this movie for that. Like the uh, director uh, Mike Rianda, like he did the um, oh my gosh, what's that show? Gravity Falls show. And Friggins knows how that show is from other people that he's heard. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's they got the same kind of thing in this. But the humor, like this movie is funny from start to finish. Uh, animate, same animation studio that did Into the Spider-Verse. So the animation's on point. The action is on point. The music is on point. And the thing that I love is just the, the, old, the story um, and how it unfolds. Lots of setups, lots of payoffs. Nothing just happened. Well, yeah, things just happened. <laughs> but lots of things most of things most of the things that happen in this movie is for a reason and it kind of it, it it you know they, they they follow up on that later on um and yeah just a lot of fun i spent 35 minutes talking about how much i like this movie uh, on my <laughs> review so um it, it this movie we watched it over and over last year we just watched it like like four hours ago and we were still cracking up not just as hard as we were the first time. We stopped breathing a couple times the first time we watched the movie, but <laughs> we were all still. And again, when I think of movies that I enjoyed, like this movie is the one movie in our household that everybody can can agree on. And those of you that's in a house full of folks, like that's that's kind of difficult. Like, hey, do you mm-hmm. want to watch this? No, I want to watch this, but yeah. I want to watch this. This movie, one person mentions mentions it. Yep, yep, yep. We good? <laughs> all right, well, let's watch it. You know, and <laughs> it... It was a great film that I was able to enjoy multiple times, and I still to this day enjoy it. So if you haven't seen it, Mitchell's versus the Machines, it is dope. And Netflix, I, baby. 
I love how, you know, film can do this type of thing. I mean, you talk about like part of the reason it's one is because of that family experience. And, you know, I think back of movies that I watched with my whole family and there's only a couple Um, like, you know, Tombstone is something that my entire family from my dad to my sisters and I watched together. And that brings me such like this additional feeling on top of a movie being good. So not only um, is this like your number one for that experience that you're sharing with your family, but I can tell you right now, like that's going to stick with them forever. And that's an extra layer of the beauty of film. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Beauty of film. Well said, friend. Thank you. Thank you. Great movie though. Like I said, I think one, one of my daughter's favorite movies of the year. It'd be in her top five for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it was her number one, but <laughs> close. close. Good you should um, have her do a top five to, or top I know, ten. So I, know. Read I actually off. asked her last night because I thought I, I predicted it would be Mitchell's versus Machines because I don't think there was any other movie she watched as much of last year. Um, but she just saw Sing 2 and she was she said that one was her favorite of the ah, year. So. Yes. so there we go. But all right. So there's the top five, baby. So moving on over friggin's i'm excited to see what you got here we go peeps you and i actually had a couple of them in the exact same spots and that starts with number five for free guy um you know i know free guy was a kind of a little bit of a roller coaster for me because when i first heard about it all i saw was the poster and i was like i'm not watching anything about that because i i just want to watch it like i'm gonna avoid all the trailers And then I got stuck in movies where the trailer came up and the next thing you know, like they had like 10 trailers and the next thing you know, I felt like I saw the whole movie. (laughs) And then then, Deadpool and Korg had a reaction video. Yeah. And I I had to watch that. That That was was the the best. best. And and I go to the theater and everything they showed in the trailer surprisingly was like only in the beginning of the movie. Um, So that was one thing I was super grateful for is they didn't ruin the movie, um, you know, with the trailers, even though I thought they did before i went in to watch it yeah um, like yeah i didn't even know it was a romantic comedy <laughs> yeah and then the rom-coms is my jam so like that helped to make it better it had ryan reynolds which helped to make it better it had wonderful cameos that you mentioned i i lost my mind when i heard hugh jackman voice um you know it was like, rock's oh God, voice wolverine i didn't really care about i that. was like yo it's the <laughs> rock he's the bank robber that's funny um and then like you know, and and wait, and the overall, rock was the bank robber. Yeah, everybody yeah. get down on the ground. It's, it's the rock, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's cool to see all those cameos, and of course, the additions of the little Marvel like weapons. So it's really really fun. All in all, it was just a super fun movie that blew me away. I would not have expected it to to be on my top ten um at the end of the year but as soon as i watched it i was like man this might be number one now of course a couple of things came out and beat it along the way but um that makes my number five again same as peeps my number four is the suicide squad i love when we do this i know me too (laughs) and you know there's only three of all of the movies i saw this year um for 2021 releases there's only three of them that I watched more than once. And Suicide Squad is one of those. I watched Suicide Squad um, uh, twice. And this movie was way more fun than I, it ever deserved to be. <laughs> um, it had so much for it that it it has the like twists and turns, the unexpected deaths, the unexpected, um, you know, uh, betrayals and the 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 team ups and the comedy and the action and the violence and the gore and the curse words and the rated R and putting a team together like all those things are things that I enjoy and so it was really cool to see it all thrown together with um, some characters I knew and some characters I didn't know um, I thought James Gunn did an excellent job of putting all these things together for us and have just a really fun ridiculous action flick but you're not excited about Peacemaker. You make me so mad. I am not. <laughs> because James Gunn made me hate Peacemaker so much. But um, Who's Milton? <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, oh, no, we won't. Because oh. well, Anyway. <laughs> um, so, You've been here with us this whole time? <laughs> oh, I thought you were Milton. Um, anyway, I, the, real quick little tidbit, and then I'll move on to the next one. But 
when I, I was rewatching it on HBO Max at home, I got curious as to how many people Harley Quinn killed in her escape scene. And I literally started counting the bodies. And there was a couple of them that I thought, eh, they probably yeah, she stabbed one them. guy in the foot. So I think she's right, okay. right. So I didn't count that guy. And like one guy just got hit in the head really hard. So I was like, yeah, maybe he's got a concussion. So I didn't count. But of all the ones that were for sure deaths, I. I don't remember now because I didn't write it down, but I know for sure it was more than 40 people. <laughs> in that one scene. Wow. <laughs> Go was Harley. Really, yeah. And then geez. there was like even like 300 more, like at the end of the movie. Like, oh, yeah, a lot yeah. Of that was just a breakout. Yeah. Um, but never, ha- I never liked Starro and they made me like Starro. And it was just an amazing experience to see Starro on a live action, big screen movie um so never I thought i wanted see to see the stars so sad make them sad too <laughs> Jeez, but that was my number four number three three and two was a tough battle for me um but alas we are here three is three and two are the movies i i, I watched the most this year uh out of uh, repetition and, and number three is mortal Kombat. i watched it three times um and mortal Kombat is my favorite game my favorite game franchise i thought you said it was an honorable mention it's number three i did he did did. oh (laughs) i was like i could have sworn you said it was an honorable mention no 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 it's my number three i absolutely wow number three mortal Kombat. yes (laughs) over come on come on get over here (laughs) over suicide squad Look, I gotta Crazy. tell you, the <laughs> opening scene of Mortal Kombat where um, Scorpion is fighting some Zero, and that opening scene is one of the is cool. the coolest fight scenes ever. It was everything I wanted out of a Scorpion and Sub Zero fight. It, I love all the characters; they made them look so cool. I had a blast with it. We did a special people's forum where we really gushed about it, and and you we know. Did. Uh, especially me because i absolutely loved i know you had a few problems probably more than i did but nonetheless um it hit all those things that i like kano was great kano was fantastic i mean so so much good stuff um so that was my number three number two the other movie i saw three times uh was shang chi um shang chi was a character that I knew almost nothing about. And that's rare for me in the comic world uh, to, to get a character, particularly from Marvel or DC that I don't know a whole lot about. And I can remember even as a kid of not really caring much about whatever a Shang-Chi is. Cause we thought he was, a we thought the pronunciation was Shang-Chi and it wasn't until this that we learned it's Shang-Chi. And I loved this movie so much guys. It was I explained it was Shang way before the movie came out. So. <laughs> I'm saying like historically, like way before, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago. Uh, um, yeah, that's fine. Um, sure. <laughs> but the, <laughs> amazing action, great storytelling, heartfelt moments, um, you know, and one of the bigger surprises for me was how much I liked the bad guy when Wu started steals the movie for me and peeps will tell you i'm not usually the bad guy fan i i almost never liked the bad guy and i loved when we um the actor i, I don't i can't think of his name right now at the top of my head but he's he is amazing and i wish he was in so much more stuff and the design the um everything about him just completely stole the show for me so absolutely love shang chi so much fun. Um, and that brings me to number one. And uh, well, I, I, I did not have any expectation that this film would be my number one. In fact, on my most anticipated list, it was my number five most anticipated uh, of 2021. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home. I have to say that I like Spider-Man. Spider-Man is cool. I get excited to see Spider-Man stuff, but Spider-Man is not my favorite character. I don't get like super excited for his stuff. And so I knew I was going to watch it. I assumed I was going to like it, but what I didn't assume was that I was going to love it 
freaking love it. I, I knew you were going to love it. Oh, I did not. I was just kind of like, eh, it'll be cool. It'll be a fun time. Mm-hmm. It'll be, you know, it'll be neat. But I, what really caught me off guard were those, you know, those those heartfelt moments, those Ooh, tie-ins those hit. to the older ones. I didn't even know that I cared about the older ones as much as I did until they were like bringing things back up and it was like pulling stuff from my past. And like, it was like, Oh, Oh yeah. I really did like those when I was younger. Oh, Oh man, that really, that really hurt. You know? Oh man. That's like that redemption story. Great job. That's awesome. Um, So it gave me all these different positive emotions going through it. And then of course it, you know, hits you with other things that happen and just breaks your heart and then, you know, heals it back up and then it breaks it again and it heals it back up. And just that roller coaster of emotions was so unexpected. Um, and, you know, obviously like, you know, the big bands and oh, it was just, it was super cool. And as Peep said, we did a whole episode discussing and breaking it down. I think it's like almost two hours long. So go check that out if you want to hear more discussion on that one. But that is my number one unexpectedly taking that number one spot was spider-man swinging in there and swooping it up and i think it's crazy how that movie is like for people i know it's causing a lot of people to want to see every other spider-man movie that has came out up until this point yes yeah like like folks are like yo so this movie made me want to watch this and i've watched Mm -hmm. all of this so it's like man they're they're getting all this you know (laughs) love from movies what 10 20 years ago and it, I had the yeah. feeling like at some point, like, cause everyone's been calling about the old Spider-Man films and referencing that. And it's just like, people used to say this movie sucked and now everyone's out right trying to watch it. And like, now there's all these people defending this movie and that movie. And like, yeah. it's so cool how it had such a positive impact to the, to the franchise. I've um, defended amazing Spider-Man from jump DX. We'll, <laughs> we'll attribute to that. So yeah. I like the first one, yeah. but not the no. Second. I mean, it, it's so it, it's so very true. I mean, on New Year's night, um, my daughter asked to watch Spider Man Two because she wow. wanted to see where Otto came from. Oh, cool! Um, and uh, and then we watched the first Amazing Spider Man because she wanted to see where the other Spider Man came from. Because I had already shown her the first Tobey Maguire one, so she was familiar with him, um, but she wasn't as familiar with Andrew Garfield. We did watch Amazing Spider Man Two about I don't know maybe a year or two ago. And she doesn't remember much about it. Um, she remembered Electro a little bit, but um, but yeah, but that we literally watched Spider Man Two and Amazing Spider Man back to back on New Year's night because cool. uh, I let her stay up to midnight. And that's what I'm saying. That's what's so cool is that because of Spider Man No Way Home, she was like interested to see like I want to see this because I set it up like it was this multiverse thing that oh well I could show you movies from this other universe that has these other Spider Man, you know, and cool. um, and it, it makes it make more sense, you know, when you see No Way Home. So um yeah i love that i love that it's creating that i mean you see the fever i know you know me and fred are always on twitter and like there's so much like give me amazing spider-man 3 now and everybody's like oh did they push morbius back so they could get andrew garfield to pop up in a cameo (laughs) and like all this stuff and it's just like man like the fever is hot right now so absolutely love it all right guys well hey let's jump into my top five and the funny thing is so you know fred had a lot like uh peeps and I have a lot like y'all too, and uh, nice. several I, in the same spot. I thought so. Well. I thought so. Um, other than my number five, so this is where both of you will be like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Um, but once again, um, it, just the enjoyment level, and you know how I feel. Uh, number five for me is Venom. Let there be carnage. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, love right. Venom. All you know, right. I had a blast with this movie, Eddie. Um, <laughs> I just, it's just fun, man. I love the dialogue. I love the connection between Eddie and Venom. And seeing Carnage on the big screen is something my young heart has always wanted to see on the big screen. And seeing that come to life, you know, I thought Woody Harrelson was great. Um, It's cheesy, but it's fun. It's got good action. And I just, I had a blast with this film. I saw it two times in the theater and just really loved it. Bought it on VOD the second it came out. Um, Watched it again when I bought it. Uh, Just really big blast for me. So that comes in number five. Tomato, Um, tomato. (laughs) <laughs> you say tomato I say tomato i think um, i enjoy hearing you guys talk about it and quote it more than i enjoyed the movie <laughs> so i appreciate your enthusiasm 
There you go. There you go. It was my number seven most anticipated movie last on last year's list, and it came in at number five. So good job. Oh, uh, cool. My number four exactly lines up with y'all. It is the Suicide Squad. Wow. So nice. pretty funny that is number four for all of us. This was my number five most anticipated movie. So very close on the anticipated list from last year. Uh, Suicide Squad was fantastic. I mean, James Gunn, we already had faith from Guardians and we were like, man, he's really good with these ensemble films and he gets to run with an R rating in the DC world. And from the second this movie starts and bodies start dropping, you're just like, here we go. And uh, I just loved it. I loved all the characters. I loved the humor. I loved the style. I loved everything. And I am looking very forward to Peacemaker, which debuts in about a week on HBO Max. So check that out. Um, But yeah, what can I say that hasn't been said already? This movie is fantastic and really holds up. I've seen it multiple times. And uh, so glad I got I went and saw it in the theater, obviously, instead of uh, just watching an HBO Max at home. Uh, it, it was a joy. So Suicide Squad comes in number four. Number three, another movie that's been mentioned a couple times, and that is Free Guy. So Free Guy is number three on my list. So I have it a little bit higher than the rest of y'all. Um, okay. But man, this was my first five star movie of the year. Um, you know, I was like, w- this movie came out in August. And I remember being like, man, what a year that we've had no five-star movie up to this point. And I didn't expect that it would be Free Guy. I mean, I was looking forward to it. It was number eight on my list from last year. Um, and I knew it would be good. I love the trailers, love Ryan Reynolds. I was like, this is going to be, it's a really cool concept. Did not have any idea I would enjoy it as much as I have. This is another one that we saw a couple times in the theater. I bought it. We watch it all the time at home. My daughter, I've caught my daughter watching this on her own a couple of times. She <laughs> loves it to death. Um, you know, like every time Ryan Reynolds pops up now, she's like, Hey, it's free guy. Um, oh boy. That's <laughs> you awesome. Know? Yeah. You know, cause she's, she's too young for, for Deadpool. So, so he's going to be free guy for a while. Hey, she watched uh, the, the Christmas one, right. Or that, uh, once upon a time uh, you know i never even thought about that <laughs> i think it's still <laughs> probably a little too much but probably uh, yeah you know uh, maybe in a couple of years but uh but yeah this movie's fantastic it was such a breath of fresh air it's an original ip that's not a sequel uh it's something fresh i love that it was inside like this grand theft auto type world uh it's hilarious it does have heart um i thought jody comer was great i thought taika watiti was awesome i thought all the characters that popped up in this thing were fantastic so free guy comes in at number three number two shang chi and the legend of the ten rings of course so uh this was my number 10 most anticipated movie of of my list last year so barely made the list last year because i didn't know who the hell he was (laughs) and i just again was like oh marvel film i'm sure it's gonna be good uh but man i had no idea how good it would be i think i saw this three times in the theater uh i bought this as well even though it's on disney plus i still bought it because i gotta keep my marvel collection going and um and i just i love this movie it just holds up the action is incredible i already had loved simu liu uh from like i said kim's convenience so like i was so stoked to see what he would do on the big screen as this action hero and he killed it um all the people in this movie killed it um like fred said you know the villain is one of the best we've seen um you know aquafina who sometimes could be a little bit too much was actually just right in the mix um and just yeah the action the sci-fi aspect of it the otherworldly aspect of it all the little characters and and just i mean it was such a unique mcu film and i cannot wait to not only see a sequel but to see him involved with some other mcu stars uh down the pipeline hopefully in another avengers or something so shang chi number two and of course number one spider-man no way home uh this was easy a slam dunk as soon as i opened my list it was just this movie was the first one added to it and went right to the top uh i knew i was going to kind of build from there and uh this movie again i've seen it three times in the theater <laughs> since uh, it's come out nice um it's so damn good um i mean what can you say like you said that hasn't been said i mean the nostalgic factor uh, all the different things that come into it. I love Tom Holland. I love all the Spider-Man films, but this one just takes it up so many notches and really just does something very unique using the multiverse and Dr. Strange and everything to create just such an amazing film. 
um, that I cannot wait to watch again. Um, so yeah, this this was a, a no brainer there. So Spider Man No Way Home at number one. Good. So yeah, yeah, man, our top fives are pretty damn pretty damn similar. Yeah, I was surprised to see uh, a lot of the same things landing in there for a change. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very refreshing. So uh, uh, why don't we run it down real quick one more time, peeps? What is your top ten completely? All right, starting from ten, it's Eternals. Number nine is The Protégé. Number eight is Malignant. Number seven is Godzilla vs. Kong. Number six is Cruella. Number five is Free Guy. Number four, Suicide Squad. Number three, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, Number two, Spider-Man, Something, Something, Something Home. (laughs) And number one is The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Holla. Friggins, what's your full top ten? Well, I have number ten, In the Heights. Number nine, Come On, Come On. Number eight, Pig. Number seven, Zack Snyder, Justice League. Number six, King Richard. Number five, Free Guy. Number four, The Suicide Squad. Number three, Mortal Kombat. Number two, Shang-Chi. And number one, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Holla. All right. And uh, number 10 for me, Black Widow. Number nine, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Number eight, Army of the Dead. Number seven, The Tomorrow War. Number six, Eternals. Number five, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Number four, The Suicide Squad. Number three, Free Guy. Number two, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And number one, Spider-Man No Way Home. If I had included Zack Snyder's Justice League, that would have been number one. Uh, But yes, for this list, Spider-Man No Way Home is a number one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the top ten of 2021 so we're gonna switch gears here um this part of the show will move a lot faster because we don't know anything about these fucking films other than that we are anticipating them so um we're gonna start once again going round table here on some honorable mentions um i like i said at the beginning of the show i thought 2022 is stacked and as I was going through, I was like, ooh, that movie looks good. Oh, that movie looks good. Oh, that movie looks good. <laughs> and that list just kept yep. building and building and building to where, yeah, there was a lot of anticipated that I just had to kind of slide over. So quickly, my anticipated, my first one is Ambulance. This is a new movie that's mm-hmm. coming out. Um, I believe it was supposed to come out in February. I believe it just got pushed to April. But it's the new Michael Bay film with Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, um, where they are guys from the military and one's down on their luck and they need money for a surgery and they end up going to rob a bank to get some quick money. And of course all hell breaks loose and we go on a chase and they hijack an ambulance and we're off to the races. So I think it looks great. I'm a big Michael Bay fan. I love what he does. I love the action stuff. So ambulance is one of my most anticipated uncharted Mm -hmm. is my next one. This comes out in February, Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg based on the video game. I think it's just going to be a fun ride. So Uncharted makes most anticipated. Next one's a very odd one that I did not think would make the list. And then the trailer came out and I loved it. Speaking of Nicolas Cage, the unbearable (laughs) weight of massive talent. This movie looks batshit crazy. He plays himself. um, Mandalorian himself, (laughs) Pedro Pascal, uh, plays a character who literally pays him like a couple million dollars to like hang out with them one day. And all the hell they get into. And it looks so good, especially if you watch the Red Band trailer. I can't wait to see this. So the unbearable weight of massive talent looks awesome. Next up is Top Gun Maverick. Uh, This looks great. This should have came out like two years ago. Then it was out last year. And here we go again. So hopefully we'll get to see this film this year. I think, you know, Tom Cruise is on a a roll right now. And the things they're doing with the jets in this are going to be a badass, especially since he's flying it directly. Um, and once again, these honorable mentions are not in any kind of order. They're just a list kind of jumbled. Uh, next up is Jurassic World Dominion. Um, love the Jurassic World series. They're bringing back all the original stars for this one. I think it's going to be a fun ride. So Jurassic World Dominion is there. Next up is Nope. This is the new Jordan Peele horror movie. Mm-hmm. And I love what he did with you know Get Out and with Us. And I can't wait to see what he does. I know nothing about it, but it's Jordan Peele. Let's go. Uh, My next one is The Man from Toronto. This is a new movie starring Kevin Hart. 
uh, where basically it's an action comedy where he gets mistaken for like a CIA agent that he obviously is not. And <laughs> we go from there. It just sounds fun. I love action comedies. They're my jam. So I think this is going to be great. Love Kevin Hart. I just want to laugh and see some cool action. It sounds like North by Northwest, the old <laughs> classic. <laughs> my next one is a movie called Samaritan. And this Ooh. stars Sylvester Stallone, and it's a superhero movie where he's like an old retired kind of superhero. Nobody really knows he has powers, and he gets kind of sucked back into this world. Um, I heard some early word about some pre-screenings, and people are being blown away by this thing. And I can't wait to see what they do with it. I know nothing but the premise, and I'm stoked. So Samaritan is on my list. Uh, Morbius, I kind of threw in there. We were looking forward to it last year. I figured, what the hell? Still looking forward to it, even though now I got to wait even longer till April to see this one. Uh, my next one is The Gray Man. This is a new Netflix movie that's coming, directed hmm. by the Russo brothers, that's going to have Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans playing spies going against each other. And I just know this is going to be fucking incredible. And that it's going to be a great. Netflix original film. I love the Russos, obviously did Infinity War and Endgame. These guys know how to make action. And Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling, let's go. This is going to be awesome. And lastly, I just almost made my top 10, but slid in at the very end. Uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, part one. What? Uh, I, I am looking very, very forward to it. You know how I feel about animated, so I couldn't quite yeah, crack the top true. 10. But, um, but it is there. I'm looking very, very, very forward to it. So there you go that's my honorable mentions peeps what you got oh my gosh okay <laughs> i'm I all know, right I know. why you gotta call me first i gotta i gotta come back all right <laughs> that i did not know about nope until right now and now Ooh. now that made my anticipation <laughs> <There So you. laughs> i'm now excited about that um another film i just discovered um you know this week uh that's coming out it's called dark harvest it's a horror movie um all again creepy looking um poster to it and it's directed by a dude named david slade he did hard candy and 30 days of night um just for that uh art and director i I am interested in so yeah uh dark harvest um there is also um oh the mario film that voice cast that was announced i watched that live that was nuts and i i kind of want to see that so it's a me chris pratt it's me chris pratt. <laughs> <laughs> i'm dk donkey kong <laughs> oh, Seth Rogen, sorry yeah um anywho um y'all know how i feel about hotel transylvania I, that's on my anticipated oh, yeah. list but it's um, not adam sandler it makes me so sad womp womp um <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rest man. of my the rest of my movies are just animated. Um, turning <laughs> Turning Red, Turning Red looks saw great. That, that looks, looks great. great. Oh, I like finally great. saw that trailer. Yeah, yeah. Werewolf awesome. meets like cute Disney panda. I yes, don't know. exactly. Um, I, Incredible I, Hulk with a cute panda. I don't know if this is going to be theatrical or not, but if it is, Chip and Dale rescue Rangers. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am I am excited about that. I did I not know about this. Chippendale growing up, and I will watch the heck out of this movie and force <laughs> my wheels to go. I am so, singing yeah. the song in my head right now. So I think it's a Disney Plus movie. Um, which is fine. You still, it on your it's list. still a 2022 yeah. release. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cruella, right? Same th- oh, wait, that was a thing. Sometimes yeah. some crimes go slipping through the cracks. So, you know, these two gum <laughs> shoes, you know, go hey man, these the days, slack. movies are movies, don't matter where it's playing. Yeah. And th- there is a, apparently like a Bob's Burgers movie coming out. And I love yes, the show. Yes. I, I, I got to see this movie. So, um, but yeah, that's it for my honorable mentions. All right. Friggins, what you got? Well, I was scrambling. Oh, Sonic because... 2. Sonic 2. Oh, yeah. There you Sonic go. Nice, there you go. Nice, Looking nice. forward to that, too. Um, you kept going down. I just expected you to say like uh, all of the other movies coming out are my honorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, uh, this one might actually surprise you guys that this is on an honorable mentions list, but that's John Wick Chapter Four. Doesn't come out this year. Uh, I had yeah, it on I the twenty-two it. two nope. list. They nope. pushed it back to twenty-three. Now, see, they keep pushing crap. So yep. scratch that. Would have been on my away. top ten, but hey, nope. take, take Gambit off of your list too. Bro. Oh, Gam- okay. <laughs> let me take that one off too. Um, Gambit gets shifted. <laughs> well, then I'll move on to MI seven. Um, I'm a big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. Unfortunately, though, there's just a lot of good stuff coming out this year, so it didn't quite make the final ten anticipated list. Um, the Buzz Lightyear. Uh, 
new movie coming out man when i saw the poster alone i was like yes i cannot wait to see this and the addition of uh one of the chris's as the uh, the the main voice i think that is super cool um you gotta love that chris and <laughs> i i'm busting out laughing just thinking about this now you guys probably know that usually like kind of comedy focused films don't usually make my list. Uh, you know, it's not my favorite genre, sure. uh, um, but I just saw so this heartless. trailer for this uh, movie with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum called yes, the, the lost, lost city. city. Oh my God. I was cracking up in the theater with this trailer <laughs> and I am so excited for this one. Um, <laughs> Uh, Uncharted was on my top 10 list, but literally moments ago just got <laughs> booted and is now on my anticipated list. And I will tell wow. you, why. I will tell you shortly. Um, and one movie that I know absolutely nothing about, but just the cast and the description has me super excited. It's called Don't Worry, Darling. And when I read the description, it says like, yeah, this is another one that Don's given. <laughs> no, you is gotta it black check and it white? No, it is not black and white. But it's an upcoming. Oh, American is this the Olivia si- Wilde one? Yes, it's directed yeah, actually, by Olivia Wilde. This one. Yeah. It's um, it's got Elena on it. But yeah, that's Ooh. what I was gonna say. When I you love look her. At the cast. It's got yeah. Florence Pugh, Olivia Wilde, Chris Pine, Gemma Chan, Harry Styles, and it goes on. Um, so it wow. looks great. Uh, just from what I'm checking out on the initial things i can't wait it to reads see great it that's what great. i should because <laughs> you haven't seen it true <laughs> the words look really great um and that will wrap up my anticipated list okay all right well this time uh for time's sake we're gonna just run through our full top 10 um because like i said we don't have much to dive into because we haven't true. seen it so we're just gonna kind of mention our titles and move along uh so i'm gonna kick us off this time Coming in number 10, I'm very excited for this movie. And once again, it's one of these ones, haven't seen anything for it. So I'm going off cast, I'm going off director, and just the idea of it. And this is a movie called Bullet Train. Uh, Bullet Train comes out uh, later this year with Brad Pitt. It's directed by David Leach, who helped with directing the first John Wick movie. He directed Deadpool 2. He directed Hobbs and Shaw. This guy knows action, and this is going to be a badass action assassin movie that all takes place on a train, and it's a bunch of assassins trying to kill each other. Brad Pitt, uh, Sandra Bullock pops up in this, uh, Zazzy Beats. There's a bunch of people that are in this thing. Uh, One of the guys from The Raid. Um, I mean, it's just this thing's stacked, and I just have full faith that this is going to be an incredible action movie, one of the best of the year. So Bullet Train comes in at number 10 for me. Number nine is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, don't know what to think about this one just because we lost Chadwick Boseman. We know that uh, we're not going to have T'Challa in this, and I'm just curious to see how they're going to pivot and where the story's going to take us because that's been so hush-hush. So I'm curious, uh, but I have faith in Ryan Coogler coming back and directing. It's Marvel once again, so I'm curious to see what they will present us. So Black Panther Wakanda Forever comes in number nine. Number eight is a movie that was on last year's list, got delayed. Fred mentioned it in his honorable mentions. It's Mission Impossible 7. I am so excited for this. I love the Mission Impossible movies, and they're just getting better and better and better. And from everything I'm hearing about 7, it's going to be batshit crazy again. Uh, Awesome stunts. Um, Man, this thing, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I I just, I know it's going to be fantastic. So MI7 is number eight. Number seven is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Uh, This is obviously Aquaman 2. I love the first Aquaman movie. It was such a fun film. Um, And I know, you know, James Wan is back. Um, Most of the cast and crew from the first movie is back. And I have a feeling he's just going to make, I mean, we got all the setup out the way. He is Aquaman now, and we're just going to go for it. And I I just have a feeling he's going to do something really, really cool with this one. So Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom is number seven. Number six is the Batman. So we have the new Batman movie coming out. It comes out in March, on March 4th, uh, directed by Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson stepping into the cowl. Um, we got Penguin. We got Riddler. We got Catwoman. Uh, the trailers have been phenomenal for this film, even though I'm still not the biggest fan of Robert Pattinson's casting. Um, I'm on more of a wait and see. 
I have loved what I've seen so far from the trailers. I have no doubt this movie is going to be really incredible. It looks like this almost like serial killer seven type movie, but in a Batman skin. And that gets me super excited. So uh, the Batman comes in number six. Number five is The Flash. I'm so excited for The Flash because we finally get Ezra Miller doing his solo movie. We have Flashpoint. We got multiverses. We got time traveling. This is where we're going to say goodbye to Ben Affleck's Batman. We're going to get Michael Keaton's back, Batman back. We got Supergirl coming in. We got Evil Flash. We got all kinds of stuff going down and a bunch of other surprises. Uh, directed by Andy Muschietti, who did the two It movies. Uh, he's an awesome director. And I cannot wait to see what The Flash does for the whole DCEU as a whole so that comes in number five my number four is black adam love the rock one of my favorites ever um this is a movie that is a massive passion project for him and he got in like the most incredible shape that he's ever been in to be able to wear this suit and not use any padding or anything in it um they're using new technology for special effects it just looks badass if you watch the clip that they did at dc fandom you see it's violent i mean he was turning people to dust and it just i just have a feeling this is going to be an incredible film and i can't wait to see this character brought to life number three avatar 2 um looking so forward to this film avatar is the first one is one of my all-time favorite films. I loved Avatar. I saw that probably six times in the theater, um, especially in 3D. It was just such a unique film that really took technology to another level. Um, such a beautiful film. And James Cameron's been working on this damn thing for like the last 10 years. So I know he's going to bring the big guns when he does. And I know a lot of the sequel takes place under underwater on the world of Pandora. And he also, again, created new technology to do these underwater scenes and I know he's going to blow us away when this thing comes out. I can't wait to see a trailer and I can't wait to see what he does and journey back to Pandora. So Avatar 2 is my number three. Number two is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, after seeing Spider-Man No Way Home and then seeing the little trailer that they played in the after credit scene, holy crap, we got Sam Raimi stepping in to direct. This movie we know is going to be batshit crazy. Not only do we have the multiverse, not only do we have Wanda being back as Scarlet Witch, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises in this film because we're dealing with the multiverse. I think we're going to see some Agreed. really cool stuff that we are just not ready for. And that makes it jump up on my list higher than I normally would have placed the Doctor Strange film. But I just have such a feeling that we're going to have that same kind of Spider-Man excitement coming out of like, can you believe rumors of people and, showing up? Oh, my God, dude, from all the people franchises. denying they have anything to do with it. Yeah. Oh, God. So, so excited. And my number one is Thor Love and Thunder. I am so overly excited for this film. This is the fourth Thor movie. We got Chris Hemsworth coming back. We got Natalie Portman coming back as Jane. She's going to become Lady Thor in this. We got Christian Bale uh, as the villain. We're going back with Taika Waititi, who just created one of my favorite all-time Marvel movies, which was Thor Ragnarok. Um, I know this is going to have like an 80s feel. I love what I've seen from the visuals so far of the concept art. Um, we know we got the Guardians of the Galaxy in this thing too. Um, this movie I just know is going to be next level. And for me, this was a slam dunk when I started making my list. I knew Thor would be at the top. Uh, he's one of my favorite um, Marvel Avengers, Marvel heroes. And I love how he's just gotten better and better with every movie. And I have no doubt this one's going to be just next level awesome. So Thor, Love and Thunder is my number one. So real quick, number 10, Bullet Train. Number nine, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Number eight, Mission Impossible 7. Number seven, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Number six, The Batman. Number five, The Flash. Number four, Black Adam. Number three, Avatar 2. Number two, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And number one is Thor, Love and Thunder. So peeps, passing the baton. What you got? Top 10, baby. Excellent. Oh, well, just like you, I have one movie that doesn't have any cinematic connections and uh, everything <laughs> yeah. else isn't. So, um, and that will be my number 10 a movie I knew nothing about until I saw the trailer. 
trailer looks really funky and it's that studio that you were just knocking a little bit ago on for oh, friggins i think i know uh, a24 uh everything everywhere yeah, that's like, <laughs> that movie man I y'all, saw the trailer y'all haven't what seen the, the trailer fuck is this watch <laughs> so trailer. confusing so confusing so interesting i really have to watch this movie so <laughs> yes that's my number 10 uh number nine uh the batman um echoing everything dx said uh i agree um I, but I don't know. <laughs> this, which is why it's a little <laughs> bit I lower um, on my list. Um, I think it's going to be unique, but I, I kind of wish we would get a Batman, a Batman movie with a, a little bit more unique of a villain. And yes, a different type of Riddler. I know that's what we're going to get. <laughs> Maybe it might be Jim Carrey Riddler. Who knows? But you know, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, you got Penguin in there too. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, and also I'm sure it's going to be a different type of Penguin too. So. We'll see. We'll see. I, we don't, I don't know if it's going to be grounded or if it's going to be comic booky, but you know, we'll see. Um, number eight um, was DX's number four, and that is Black Adam. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about what this movie is going to be about. Black Adam in the comics is a straight up villain. Uh, he's not really an antihero that I know of. So if, if they're going to paint him to be an antihero, cool. I just don't really see how with his comic book story and DC so far has very comic book um accurate so i'm very curious as to see how they're going to do this but it's the rock like dx said um you know lots of fun stuff out out about it already so it's going to be a blast black adam number seven um the marvels which i'm uh, surprised it wasn't on your list because the marvels got pushed to to 2023 so my number seven is (laughs) the flash (laughs) rearrange because that wasn't on my list uh yeah so i picked number seven for the flash because uh you know it you know it could be a game changer for dc and yes we already have shazam which is an amazing you know dc movie but again this could potentially reset the whole dc beef that people have out there so i'm i'm hoping it will do that so that's why I picked the flash is my number seven nice call. awesome yeah um well number done. six well is uh thor love and thunder um everything dx said it's going to be a blast and the fact that they're bringing pace. the god killer into it yes. um uh, which is a Kristen bale character uh I'm super excited not expecting him to be anything like the comics but i i can't wait to see his design because his design in the comics is nuts so yeah cool um number five wasn't on dx's list uh the secrets of dumbledore the fantastic beast <laughs> oh. third movie yes, um we'll never l- absolutely <laughs> love the first one didn't really like the second one it was okay uh, a little bit disappointed with way things panned out but i am still pretty excited about this movie um and what it could do but uh, more uh, than thor uh, yeah that's big to be to be determined uh, at a later time, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, uh... I when I made this list, I, we didn't have a trailer yet. Okay, so the trailer, it, the trailer would have knocked it down probably a couple not not. Just, uh, it's all about Dumbledore. Like you, you uh, had time to adjust. <laughs> <laughs> this, didn't, this didn't happen. We got to go. We got to keep it moving. Number four is uh, Wakanda Forever. Um, I would like this to be higher on my list. Uh, this was probably one of my, you know, top favorite uh, Marvel movies. Uh, the the first one, I should say. Uh, really excited to go back into Wakanda and to see what they're going to be doing um, with the Black Panther character. Um, but you know, we'll see. There's been a lot of issues with uh, uh, production, so we'll we'll see how things turn out. I hear there's even more reshoots, so we'll we'll see what happens with this one. So Wakanda forever. Yeah, I'm a little afraid this one's not even going to make it this year. Because yeah, they stopped be filming because of uh, Letitia Wright's injury, so they've they've shut down for a couple months, and uh, it's already coming out at the end of the year. So I've just and then like, that's mm, going to push other movies back. I, and, I know, uh, dude, that's going to create that fucking chain again. Yeah, yep, yep. We'll see. Um, Fingers crossed. My number three and my number two match yours, so I'll go ahead and say Ooh. Avatar for my number two, and uh, my number three is Doc Strange. Um, Avatar. Mm-hmm exactly what you said i i think i actually saw it seven times in the theater when it first came out <laughs> i still feel like i get that ash in my hair at that scene when the 3d and the ash oh, is coming man. down and like it was so good um a fantastic well, like movie. a baby 
um one of those movies i take people to, i used to take people to and like yeah. one of my best friends she leaned over to me and said like sean i think this is my favorite movie of all time like halfway through the movie and nice. I'm like, yes. yes it's such a good movie i'm so excited about this and i'm also excited that it's one thing if you're planning sequels it's another if you're planning and filming sequels simultaneously and yeah. that's what they're doing with this so I, i'm super stoked super excited and the cast that they have in this like michelle Yu and ah just the other names that are on this i'm super stoked for so yes uh and then doc strange um come on doc strange it's going to be nuts it's literally going to be another um uh, no way home spider-man movie where we're going to have theories we're going to have rumors we're, all this stuff's going to be popping up shortly before the movie comes out and all the actors will be lying about what they're doing or not doing so <laughs> you know, don't even bother interviewing them because they're not going to tell you anything because you know. sir patrick stewart i'm sure you're not <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> right yeah just ask mark ruffalo i'm sure he'll spill beans but um and then last um uh, what i'm flabbergasted is my spider-man across the spider-verse part one <laughs> um <laughs> one of my favorite movies of all time um, mm -hmm. I am super excited about this. Um, I cannot wait to get back to the Spider-Verse. And in that trailer, the fact that they gave, like, the Prowler's tr um, music, musical's theme in, in the original one was super dope. But now that Spider-Man 2099 has his own unique musical theme when he showed up, ah, oh, so excited about this one. So across the Spider-Verse, number one most anticipated. So my number 10, my 10 is everything everywhere is everything awesome. Um, the Batman <laughs> is number nine. The name, but... um, eight is Black <laughs> Adam. Seven is seven was and always will be the Flash. Uh, number six is <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder. Five is Secrets of Dumbledore to be uh, you know later. Yeah. Um, four is Wakanda Forever. Uh, three is Avatar. Two is Doc Strange. And number one is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Booyah! Nice. Well Guaranteeing done. that's going to be my number one favorite next year. Oh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Guarantee. No doubt. All right, Friggins, what you got? All right, so you match up at all with us? Uh, not really. <laughs> I, I do, I think. I'm no, come wrong. on, come on, too. <laughs> no, no, come on. It's still it's, come on, and yeah, yeah, it's come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Uh, come on. All right, so my number 10 uh, was previously held by Uncharted, but through your description, you said a couple key words. You said the Russo brothers. Then you <laughs> said Ryan uh, Gosling. Then you said Chris Evans. And then I pulled up the cast and saw that it also has Anna de Armas. It has mm. Jessica Henwick, Connie, um, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Bob Thorne. I mean, it, it goes on. And so yes. I am extra stoked for that now. So that stole my number 10 literally nice. as Look we at were that. doing this. That During the recording, see? And then Peeps is over here like, well, I made this list like a month ago before the Dumbledore <laughs> trailer <laughs> came out and I couldn't you, make you it. You can't change it. I don't know. <laughs> you Friggins can change is... it. No, nope. You can't change it once it's said, but before it's said, but then there we go. So um, <laughs> the Gray Man, number 10. Number nine, I have Black Adam. Now I know that's probably going to upset you. It's a little bit low. Hey, but... man, I made top 10. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. It's like I'm not as big of a The Rock fan as you are, so um, he is cool. Obviously, he's, he just exudes charisma, but um, I'm hoping that they give him more villainy vibes than I think they're going to. Um, so we'll mm. we'll have to see how it goes. Um, did you no ever watch that clip? I did, I did, yeah. On Dude. the what, what do they call it? The DC Fandom when that yeah. was released, I watched it on um, on that day. It's pretty villainy, man. He like straight rips the dude's like spine out. <laughs> like, I know like, that was really people good. to dust. Like dust it's is a lot more like... violent than I assumed it would be. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I did not expect to have that level of like, especially for the first clip that they yeah. showed, right? <laughs> exactly. So I, I dug that, and I think that's partially why it is on my top ten. Um, number eight. I have Wakanda Forever. Um, pretty much the same thing you guys said. The thing about Black Panther is when I first watched it, I didn't really, it wasn't my favorite. I, I liked it a lot, but it wasn't like my favorite. But literally every time that I rewatch it, it climbs the list and I can't stop rewatching it. And I mean, it just keeps going up and up and up and up. So it makes me really excited to see what they do uh, for the sequel. 
Um, number seven, this movie has been on my anticipated list for the last three years in a row. So why not have Top Gun Maverick on it again? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that back over here and keep moving. And if it doesn't come out until 2023, it'll probably be on that list too. Um, but, you know, as as you mentioned, Don, with all the crazy jet stuff he's doing, it, it just, I can't wait to see what wild things he does. That dude is, a, it's crazy to think that he taught like learned how to fly and all these crazy stuff that he does so um anyway number six for me is avatar 2 i um i'm so happy to see it on your guys's list you know there's actually a a lot of like hate for the first avatar and i don't understand it because that movie is just was so amazing for me i also saw it in the theater about six times um and i kept dragging people you gotta go why is the biggest box office film of all yeah exactly (laughs) i just saw it like eight times (laughs) keep taking people like then they re-released a like extended edition and i went back to the theater to watch that (laughs) um and i just I just want to see what James Cameron's going to come up with because you know he's going to have yes. something crazy. Underwater, um, baby. My number five is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Um, I think the fact that it's part one of two actually dr- made it drop for me. When I saw the part one, it kind of made me sad because oftentimes we have a part one, part two type situation. I feel like I don't get a full story. Like Dune, I think that was part of the reason why Dune was a little bit lower for me. So, um, you know, I, I feel like that addition actually brought me down a little bit, but I love Spider-Man 2099 and I'm super hopeful to see a couple other particular um, Spider-Man join. I kind of have my fingers crossed for a possible uh, sp- uh, the punk Spider-Man. So we'll see if that uh, rock star punk Spider-Man comes in or not. Um, number four, I have the Doctor Strange sequel, the the Multiverse of Madness. That trailer just got me extra hyped. Um, seeing the the evil Doc Strange and all the other uh, cameos that they they threw in that little sneak peek for us at the end of uh, Spider Man got me super excited. Uh, Doctor Strange is a character that I think is growing on me more and more and more, um, and it's. I, I, I just want to see what they're going to do. I'm hopeful that they add a little bit of, um, I don't want to say horror elements, but like, you know, darker tones with this, like That's what m- they're messing saying. with the multiverse. Especially with Sam Raimi. Exactly. It brings me hope. It brings me hope. So we'll see how it ends up turning out, but very excited to see what is going to come of that. Um, my number three is The Flash. Uh, you know, you kind of said a little bit of everything. I, I wasn't expecting to get so excited to see the old school 89 batman on the screen again and just seeing the horns you know the silhouette of the horns and everything as he like walks out and hearing his voice um it gave me like goosebumps and chills and i remember and watching that that teaser of the flash where right when they're about to pull the the cover over the batmobile i kept saying like show me the car show me the car show me the car and then they cut and i'm like you bastards but it's funny because i i already know what the car looks like so (laughs) (laughs) Um, but that flash is my number three for me. Number two is the Batman. Um, unlike you guys, I am absolutely loving the vibe of this. I think Robert Pattinson is the more I've seen of him. He gets kind of looped into the twilight curse, but the more you watch of his films, the, the crazy, uh, uh, the, the way you can kind of see how he can, go from one role to another and be completely different people. His acting skills are next level. I mean, every film he's in, he's in a, he portrays it differently and a different vibe. So I couldn't be more excited to see him play a younger Batman. And I'm glad we're seeing a younger Batman. I'm super stoked for Catwoman. Um, you know, I think she's going to do an excellent job. And as well as the uh, unrecognizable uh, Colin Farrell as Penguin, and I have, I remember years ago hearing about someone like saying, oh, Riddler should be like a serial killer or something. And just thinking how cool of an idea that would be. And I can't believe it actually is making it into film. So I'm all for this darker Batman movie and cannot wait. Um, bringing me to my number one, which is also, as you, Don, Thor, Love and Thunder. Yes he's going to drop the hammer and it's going to be amazing, but what's going to be even more amazing anymore. Oh, I was just going to say is what's going to be even more amazing 
is Jane dropping the hammer? Um, hammer doesn't exist. I'm confused. Oh, it exists. Oh, yes. it does. You and if you look at the concept art, it looks like it's the exact same hammer that got destroyed because it's all cracked. It's all cracked and pieced yep. back together. And the cool thing, though, is Jane Thor is one of my favorite new Marvel characters that has been created within the last, like, I don't know, it's like 15 years or something. Um, and I love her so much. And I've been dying to see her on the big screen. So this is something I've just been really, really looking forward to and cannot wait to see her wield this hammer. You want me to put the hammer down? <laughs> yeah. But just to re- recap real quick, number 10, the gray, the gray man, number nine, black Adam, number eight, Wakanda forever. Number seven, Top Gun Maverick, number six, Avatar two, number five, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse part one. Number four, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Number three, The Flash. Number two, The Batman. And number one, Thor, Love and Thunder. Woo! I'm really sad that none of y'all had Aquaman on your list or even in an honorable mention. I, I, I thought it was going to be on yours. Yeah. Not me, man. I My favorite thing of Aquaman was the, the uh, Black Mana. So if they had a Black Mana movie, that would have been on He's my list. He's in it, thing. though. Come That's on. okay. I'm looking no forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, but just not, not... even an honorable mention. Shout out. <laughs> Jeez. Watch. Y'all going to be like, that was incredible. I, can't I know. I right? have that it's in my top 10. Number one next year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Well, hey, we are going to wrap it up here. Uh, it has been a mega episode, as these always are, as we try to get through literally you know 100 movies here between everything that we're talking about uh between 2021 and then 2022 i hope you all have enjoyed it uh even if it took you you know 10 different times to play this uh to listen to the whole thing in its entirety so i appreciate you for listening to the top 10 movies of 2021 and our top 10 most anticipated of 2022 so peeps where can the people find you as always, reddragonsradio.com uh, or just Google the People's Forum. I'm also on the Twitters. Uh, if you want to hit me up, number four, my people's number four, four, my people's at Twitter. Uh, hit me up, follow me and I'll follow you. And then and then you'll follow Friggins because he'll tell you where you can find <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, it's Spotify, um, Stitcher, uh the itunes uh my uh the the people's forum is there so yeah and thanks Brigham. dx for having me too. of course man of course yes, thank, yes, you thank, you, thank you thank you um you can find me as a regular guest that pops up here and there on reddragonsradio.com um dx dominic is kind enough to invite me over to the am i still in the air episodes to do these kinds of fun uh recordings as well as my buddy peeps over here um who also invites me to the people's forum to chime in on a few various topics here or there uh as peeps alluded to you can find me on twitter and also instagram at friggins that's f-r-i-g-g-i-n-z friggins with a z and that's the same for both trying to make it real easy for you uh one other thing we do do some live stream DD action if you are into DD, you can check that out on twitch oh i just forgot that twitch.tv.com <laughs> slash mead and friends um and that's about every other saturday awesome awesome make sure you follow the crew and get with it uh once again you can follow our show at simply am i on the air all one word am i on the air.com is the website that's where you can find everything you need of course links to all the socials uh, and all the episodes so this is am i still on the air of course we have the regular am i on the air every single monday night uh and uh yeah subscribe on all the different social medias subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify all the platforms just search am i on the air and follow along for all the fun adventures so that'll do it for us right here for our big am i still on the air countdown for 2021 and 2022 i hope you all have enjoyed uh you know hit us up on social media let us know what you're looking forward to join the conversation i hope it's a great year of film we are definitely looking forward to a lot of good stuff and i can't wait for these months to come on and get here real quick so thanks everyone and until next time y'all peace Red Dragons!